The U.S. Virgin Islands turned 100 this year. The islands of St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John were purchased by the United States from Denmark in 1917. Under the leadership of the only black governor in the United States, the U.S. Virgin Islands recently expanded its Medicaid program. The territory has one of the highest minimum wages in America. Joining us right now is Governor Kenneth Mapp of the U.S. Virgin Islands. How's it going? Fine, Roland. Good morning. How are you? Doing great. So for the folks out there, um, it, it, you're governor of the U.S. Virgin Islands, but you're not a state. We're not. We're a territory, an incorporated territory. There are five of us, Puerto Rico, Guam, American Samoa, uh, and the Northern Marianas Islands. So you want to be a state? I don't know if that's a debate going on in the Virgin Islands. It's more robust in Puerto Rico. Uh, I would say the people of the Virgin Islands are pretty much at status quo towards more integration with the United States. But there are a lot of economic issues being a state and not being a state in terms of customs and trade and the economy. So I'm, I don't know that we have a robust debate, a robust debate about becoming a state. So you have a member of Congress though, but she doesn't vote. That's correct. And nor do the people in the Virgin Islands vote for president, uh, the president of the United States. We're subject to the call of the president for uh, conflicts and we hold the highest distinction of the largest sacrifices per capita in all of the conflicts of the U.S. We have a robust enrollment of Virgin Islanders in the armed forces and uh, our cemeteries have honored veteran sections and uh, we just have a large number of people that have died on, on sacrifices in the conflict of the country. Uh, but we cannot exercise our vote for president living in the territories. We can exercise them if we move to the mainland and take up residency and there are 40,000 people who affiliate as Virgin Islanders that, US, that live in the U.S. mainland and have the right to exercise their vote for president. Now we, we're seeing of course with this whole fight battle when it comes to uh, minimum wage. How are you able to actually get that done when you still have cities here who are fighting it? You have legislatures who are passing laws preventing cities like North Carolina from passing their own uh, minimum wage ordinances. Well I have to say I have a very robust and forward-thinking uh, legislature of the Virgin Islands and uh, three years ago uh, they appropriately and I was very happy to sign into law legislation advancing the minimum wage from 715 next year it will end up I believe at 1050 it went to 950 this year the Virgin Islands has a, a, a very high it's, it's a high cost place to live uh, in point of fact it is higher than living in Washington DC the federal, oh. that's correct. <laughs> that's <hot. laughs> when federal employees are assigned to the U.S. Virgin Islands, they enjoy a 34% increase in pay, a COLA, because of their cost of living in the U.S. Virgin Islands. And so it was important. Why for, is that? It, it has to do with the importation of goods. Uh, it has to do with, uh, it just, it, you're living in an insular area, you're 1,200 miles outside of Florida. Uh, it's just a little bit more expensive to live there, and of course, it's a high tourist uh, uh, destination. Greg Carr? You know, the question, with, thank you, Roland, the question of uh, minimum wage is always a question of will it hurt the economy. I got one of my best friends, Kathy Adams, teaches at the HBCU, uh, of course, Virgin Islands, yeah. and she talks about that cost of living. How does raising the minimum wage affect the economy? What, what, can you deal with that? Because the naysayers well, say well, it Well, it do does, it. but it, 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 there's several things that's very good about the Virgin Islands uh, in terms of economic growth and supporting a minimum wage. One, we're a high uh, tourist destination, so you have a lot of uh, spending. We uh, do financial services. We give very excellent tax incentives. We can give you up to 90% abatement on your federal tax obligation for doing business and housing business in the Virgin Islands. Wow. We're developing our workforce and the quality and the work skill of our people. And it's just very important. You can't have people living on the margins where they can't feed families, where, they, where seniors have to make choices about medicines or electricity. Mm -hmm. That just doesn't work. And when you have folks that can come in the Virgin Islands and pay up to $25,000 a night for a villa or $500 on average for a hotel room yes. and you're housing 3 million American visitors and we're happy to have them, uh, you've got to really work in terms of bringing the margins of the quality of life of workers in the territory up. Why should African Americans on the mainland care about the Virgin Islands and what do you want them to know and do 
basically in terms of supporting the Virgin Islands. African Americans on the mainland should care about the Virgin Islands because most African Americans' ancestors who live on the mainland came through the Caribbean in the slave trade. Just, just be frank about that, that you had to be broken in the Caribbean before you came up to Mississippi and to Louisiana and all the states to just be on the plantation. And we are very much connected. Mm -hmm. And if you have an insular area, an American uh, community with the majority of African Americans, you want to be sure that the U.S. government, which is responsible for its insular areas, the four million people that live in the territories, are doing the right thing, that, that there are opportunities, that there are economic growth, that we're taking care of our seniors and our children. If it's not happening in a small community, Trust me, it will not happen in a large community. I got about 45 seconds left. Chris, quick, quick question. Just a quick question. Can a brother get an application? <laughs> you can come and, and, and visiting the Virgin Islands. You don't need a passport. You can fly directly from Washington, from Dulles, yeah, from Atlanta, <laughs> from the East Coast, from Houston, Texas. Land in St. Thomas, land in St. Croix. Have a wonderful time. Meet all of our virgins that live in the Virgin Islands. And <laughs> come back home. Did you bring money when you come? show, man. <laughs> well, Chris Siegel, so he's like, I'm good, I'm good. I'm good to go. Well, we want you to come on down. I mean, it's just an exciting place right. to be. We're at a crossroad where our economy is growing. We're recreating yeah. more opportunity for our people and want them to get in business. St. Croix is driving a culinary industry with our young black males who are I chefs, been successful on the mainland, coming home and opening business. It's just a good time to be in the Virgin Islands. Well, y'all got to invite me to speak at that HBCU. And you've been in the Virgin Islands. Right. I'm, 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 I'm told you're a I'm, member I'm, of I'm, Alpha I'm, Phi I'm, Alpha. Alpha. Yes. So it's great. Yes, yes sir. So One of my great. senators said I should tell you hello, Senator Sanders. There you okay. go. <laughs> yes. What up, 06? I got to go to a break. Back in 60 seconds. A peaceful protest turned deadly. 37-year-old black man and was shot and killed by Baton Rouge police. Your hands are in the air and you still get shot by the cops. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not gonna let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. And we will keep focused on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at seven on TV One.